Natural resources in Africa are abundant. On the other hand, it's the poorest continent in the world. If we don't do anything in 50 years, this could be my children's children, that could be yours. This is a map of what could become some of the largest slums in the world by the end of the century. Due to climate change and climate migration in the US. In order for this not to happen, we have to do something, we have to act. But we have no time. There's really a countdown. And to stop this time bomb, each of us has to act on his own mission. My mission is to bring to the world a new method for cultivating meat, and I'll explain. History teaches us that animal-based solutions can't always be scaled in order to meet population growth. Let's look at what happened in New York or London at the end of the 19th century, following industrial revolution and the growth of, of urban populations. The transportation industry, which relied on animals, caused a significant load on the environment. The cities were literally collapsing from the environmental impact of horses' manure. Therefore, we have to innovate. We had to implement a new solution adapted to the, to the new size of the cities, the core. Today again, the food system based on animals cannot be scaled enough in order to feed 7.8 billion people. And here again, we are collapsing from the environmental impact of animals. The same production methods for feeding 1.6 billion people in 1900 can't be scalable, can't, can't be suitable for feeding the world population of today. Therefore, here again, we have to innovate. In 2017, I had the luck to start Aleph Farms together with the Strauss Group and with the Technion, the Israel Institute of Technology. We grow meat outside the animal directly from the building blocks of the meat we know today. Natural cells which, which are harvested from the animal without any harm. With a fraction of the resources, without any antibiotics, and without any animal welfare issues associated with industrial farming. How does it work? Like any other breakthrough in the human history, it starts with learning from nature. Electricity, antibiotics, even the will, started by looking at nature. Here we learn how a steak naturally forms and grows inside the cow. And we isolate cells which have this capability of making new muscle tissue inside the animal or repairing existing one. And we transfer those cells into a controlled environment outside the animal, which replicates the same conditions as on the inside, so that the cells continue to divide, to multiply, and to make meat, but on the outside. We do see cultivated meat as a second domestication, same as when 12,000 years ago, men found a way to incorporate into a controlled environment a natural, a natural phenomenon for animals to reproduce and, and grow in the wild in order to get better access to their food with less resources, we're implementing the same idea on the level of the edible part of the animal. Technically, we domesticate meat. And cultivated meat is part of cellular agriculture. Cellular agriculture will be part of agriculture. It's not intended to replace small-scale, family-owned, traditional farming, but rather to be a better alternative to industrial farming, to feedlots, which represent today 70% of the meat production globally. In five to ten years from now, we'll have two categories of meat. We'll have slaughtered meat, harvested from the carcass of a slaughtered animal, and we'll have slaughter-free meat, cultivated meat, same as we have today, white wine and red wine, two different categories of wines, each with a slightly different value proposition. But you would ask, how does cultivated meat address issues of global stability and social justice? Well, 
To answer this question, let's first understand the issue with our global broken food system. And we'll see how this new method for producing steak can provide a significant, meaningful solution to the most pressing challenges our generation is facing. First, let's understand food security, which is having sufficient access to nutritious and affordable food. COVID-19 has led to staggering levels of food insecurity, from its impact on global trade, on regional economies and local ability to produce food. Our system today is fragile and can be impacted by the next crisis, whether it be political instability, climate change, or trade wars. We have to find a way to turn our food system into a local, equitable system empowering the communities, resistant to the next crisis. Second, let's understand the critical role meat production and the livestock industry plays in depleting our natural resources and on climate change. Today, the livestock industry is using 46% of the crops harvested every year for animal feed, causing deforestation, but also loss of biodiversity. We lost 30% of our arable land during the last 50 years. The livestock industry is responsible today for 15% of the global greenhouse gas emissions, according to the FAO. Today, 1% of the planet is considered a barely livable hot zone. In 2070, this portion could go up to 19%. Billions of people call this land home and might lose it. We have to look at food and the right to have access to high-quality nutrition as a fundamental right of humanity. On one hand, we live in an era of abundance. On the other hand, close to 900 million people are suffering today from malnutrition. We have to rethink the food security issues not as, a, as an individual issue, but as a challenge on the community level. So how could cultivated meat contribute to solving the food system issues? On one hand, cultivated meat can uh, break this vicious circle of the food system causing climate change, and climate change impairing in return our ability to produce food. If we don't break this vicious circle, the lack of food and the climate change will cause migrations. The big climate change migration has started. Look at West, West Bengal in May 2020. Migrations will cause social tensions, will cause political instability, hunger, and will hurt the poorest. Second, cultivated meat can also help addressing the choke points which have been identified by the Chatham House. Today, the food and feed industry rely on remote production and global trade. It's enough one of those routes being disrupted to send hundreds of billions of people to food insecurity. By providing a platform for local production, which will be equitable, resilient, and sustainable, cultivated meat can help addressing those challenges and those risks moving forward. Last but not least, Cultivated meat is one of the only technologies I know which can contribute to up to 10 out of the 17 sustainable de development goals of the United Nations. By providing a secure and unconditional access to high-quality nutrition to anyone, anytime, anywhere, cultivated meat can be a fundamental piece of solving the whole puzzle. And there, there is one more thing. The food of the future will not, not only be sustainably produced, it will also be transparent for the consumer and personalized. There is an urgency for the long term. We need to act now. The issue is not in 2040. How will feed 9 billion people? Each of us has to take a mission and to figure out what it is. Either big or small, it doesn't matter. 
It's part of the whole puzzle. It will be your mission. Should you choose to accept it?